Hello, my name is Emma and I am here to help you with your English. Today I wanted to talk about a question I get a lot. Many learners of English ask me, Emma, what do I do? I want to practice English, but I live in a country where people don't speak English. How can I practice more? So if you live in a country where um, people don't speak English and you want to practice more, I have some great tips and advice to help you do this. If you do live in an English speaking country, these tips are also good. Um, you can get more practice. So let's get started. So the first tip I have is if you want to practice reading and listening, there are different websites that can really help you with this. I really like the BBC radio and the CBC radio. So you can find these websites online um, and they give world news or news about different um, topics, including art, culture, current events. The thing I like about listening to these short radio clips is that you can see how long they are in advance. I recommend um, to my students to not pick very long uh, listenings or readings in the beginning. If they're advanced, that's fine. But for people who are just starting to learn English, choosing something short that maybe is a minute or two minutes is a good idea. You can listen to one or two minutes of English every day. Um, another great website I love is Breaking News English. Here you can see other um, news stories and you can get the news in easy English or harder English. You can also, um, you can also listen to the same news stories as well. So you can read or listen depending on what you want to do. So I recommend these three sites. I think they're fantastic for learning. My second tip is you can visit www.teacheremma.com. This is my website and I have um, had this website since January. This website, I know I'm biased, but it's fantastic for practicing English. The reason is I have a lot of students who come on and I teach different lessons on different subjects. And in the comments, I have students um, post a lot of information or questions and I respond. So this is a great way to actually um, talk with a native speaker. So I recommend checking out this website. I offer free lessons and there's also a paid subscription. All right, so let's see what other tips I have for learning English. So my third tip, and I love this tip, is you can make or join an English club. I like learning with other people. I find it sometimes difficult or boring learning things, especially a language on my own. So I think English clubs can be a great way to practice English. So how can you find people for an English club? Well, the library is often a good place to start. Um, a lot of libraries have an English section. Maybe the library in your city or town already has an English club. If not, maybe you can make a poster and try to find people through the library um, to create an English club. Colleges and universities are another great place to find people. A lot of colleges or universities have an English department. Um, you can often find people who are learning English at college or university. So again, if there isn't a club, maybe you can make one. Create a poster and try to find other people who are learning English as well. Sometimes religious places have an English club. I know in Toronto, there are many churches that run um, English conversation circles. So it might be an idea to check out a religious place where you live. Maybe it might be a church, a mosque, a synagogue, or a temple. Whatever the case, maybe they have an English club, or maybe they would be willing to work with you to create one. So when it comes to English clubs, it's always a good idea to have a goal or a plan for each time you meet. This can make your English club very successful. So one example of a plan you might have is you and the other members of your club can choose an English song to learn together. Maybe you can learn some vocabulary from the song or some expressions. You can talk about if you like the song, if you don't like the song, uh, 
you can compare two songs, which one is better. So there's a lot you can do with just music. You can also read or listen to the news together, maybe a short clip. So for example, I talked about the CBC radio and the BBC radio and Breaking News English. These are all great places to find small um, examples of English you can discuss. You can also go to websites like goodluckiults.com or goodlucktoefl.com. Um, these websites are for people who are taking the IELTS or the TOEFL, but they also have great speaking questions. So if you ever want to uh, find some great questions that you can talk about, you can go to the site and look for the speaking section. There you will find many interesting topics and speaking questions you can ask each other. So these are all great ideas for what to do in your club. Another thing that you can do is maybe you are confused by something. You don't know if it's un or until or by, or maybe there's a new word you don't understand. There's a lot of questions we often have about English. So what you can do is in your club, you can come up with a list of questions of things that confuse you. And then together, you can search for the answer. Sometimes having more heads together is better than just one. Most, um, in clubs especially, different people know different resources. So maybe your friend here has a great website he uses to learn English, maybe another friend knows of another place. So together you can use your knowledge to answer some of these English questions. So let's look at some other tips for what to do when you are learning English in a non-English speaking place. So my fourth tip um, I used when I lived in China, it's go to a popular expat place. So what is an expat? An expat is somebody from another country who comes to your country to work. Expats often speak different languages because they're from all over the world. So you can find an English speaking expat and practice with them. How can you find an English speaking expat? What I would recommend is go to the area of your city or town where people from other places hang out. So for example, there's usually um, in different, like in Beijing, for example, there was a place where a lot of English speakers would hang out. They'd go to the same clubs or the same restaurants. Um, in other countries, you'll find a lot of English speakers hang out in the same neighborhood or area. So find out what these places are. And then what you can do is you can um, maybe make a poster and try to find somebody to do a language exchange with. What's a language exchange? Well, a language exchange is where you and another person teach each other your languages. So for example, if I want to learn Chinese, and my friend here wants to learn English and he speaks Chinese, then we can practice together. Half the time we can speak English, the other half of the time we can speak Mandarin. So it's a great way to learn English for free. So again, going to the local expat area, maybe going to a coffee shop or a restaurant and putting up a poster saying you want to learn English and in exchange you will teach, um, your language, it's a great way to meet people. My fifth tip is it's always good to know what your mistakes are. And this is something you can do on your own. You can record yourself speaking. When you listen to yourself talk, you often will notice mistakes you make in your speech. So you can listen and then you can make a conscious effort to try to fix those mistakes um, the next time you speak in conversation. Another thing you can do is um, with your writing. You can know your mistakes and you can look for those mistakes anytime you write something. When you know what your mistakes are, it's easy to learn from them. So how do you know what mistakes you're making? If English isn't your first language, how would you know? Well, one thing I would recommend is find out what mistakes people who speak your language often make when they speak English. So for example, I know a lot of French speakers make mistakes with make and do in English. I know a lot of um, 
Korean speakers have trouble with L and R in English and listening to the difference. Um, I know that a lot of uh, students I've had who are South American have trouble when they write because they write really long sentences because that, I guess, is, is more common in their writing tradition. So it's a good idea to know what are common mistakes people from your culture or your language group make in English. And then record yourself speaking and check, do you make these mistakes? Or look at your writing. Are you making these mistakes? Um, another possibility you can do is create an edit checklist. You can, um, when you edit, you reread something to look for the mistakes and fix them. An editing checklist is something that reminds you which mistakes to look for. So maybe you always forget to use capital letters. Maybe when you write, you write, I like, when really I in English is always a capital letter. It's always I. So if you know that this is a mistake you make, you can write it down on a checklist. And then anytime you write, look at that checklist. It can remind you what your mistakes are and how to fix them. My next tip is um, I would like to recommend a website you can check out, Coursera.org. This website has a lot of university courses that are free. Maybe there's something you've always wanted to learn. You can check out a course from Coursera.com, or sorry, Coursera.org. And they often have forums where people worldwide are learning together. So this is a way to meet other people who, who know English. You can write to each other on the forums about the course you're taking. My last tip for today is to visit www.ingvid.com. There you will find myself and many other teachers with a lot of different videos on different topics. Um, you can take quizzes on ingvid.com on these different topics, and you can also post on the comments boards. So you can write um, different comments to each other. You can meet a lot of people that way. So I really recommend checking out ingvid.com. I actually, I guess I have one more uh, tip to give you. You can also subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to ring the bell. Um, by subscribing to my channel, you can get more videos on a whole bunch of different topics. So I recommend subscribing and ringing the bell to make sure you get all this great English content. So thank you so much for watching. Um, everything covered in this video, uh, I'll actually be putting on a quiz at www.ingvid.com. So there you can actually practice what you learned. So thank you for watching and until next time, take care.